depends on what Mr. Stottlemyre decides to ask for. He's had a substantial ERA since moving over to the Texas Rangers, but the young man has always piled up a lot of innings, and in this day and age, that is a valuable starter. Now it's 3 0 to Lance Johnson. Another guy that's had some problems since going over to Texas is Todd Zeal. And that Ranger team doing everything they can, but they just can't quite catch Anaheim. Now that lead in the AL West is three and a half games. Three balls, one strike to Lance, the former Cardinal. Full count now. I think Lance was traded to the White Sox for Jose De Leon. Originally he was. De Leon had some good years. Popped up out of play. But he also had some very bad years, and one of the reasons why he had so much trouble in his years in the National League was he couldn't hold base runners close. In the American League, where they weren't quite as aggressive, he had some decent years, but he struggled here. And they ran on him at will. Again, the count is full. The 3 2. Almost hit him. Lance draws the one out walk. So Oliver's had pretty good control today. That's his first free pass of the ball game. He struck out two men. He scattered four hits. But again, Hernandez, Grayson, and Sosa uh, attempting to tie this game or put the Cubs in front in the fifth. In his two at bats, Jose Hernandez has hit the ball right on the nose twice. And again, this Cardinal defense, the second worst in the league, probably will be put to the test because Oliver is not going to have a 10 or 12 strikeout game. The hitters will put the ball in play consistently. Jose one for two today. Single, he's reached on an error by the shortstop. That Boston game continues to, or Toronto game, I should say, continues to go the Blue Jays' way. It's 10 to 1 in the bottom of the seventh inning. Toronto now is only five games behind Boston in the wild card. And the Red Sox are hosting the Yankees tonight. Wow. And there is the wild card race. Boy, would Rocket Roger Clemens like to have one shot at the Red Sox for the whole shooting match? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Two nothing game. And now time is called as Jose stepped out of the box. We talked about the Shields and Polanco having the occasional difficulty. Big Mac, not the greatest first baseman in the world. And the man at third base, Tatis, has committed 25 errors between Texas and here in St. Louis. And that is a whopping total for a third baseman. And it hasn't gotten better for him since he did the Dennis Rodman thing with his hairdo. <laughs> he's got the ears for it. But if you look underneath that red cardinal cap, he's got the strawberry blonde thing going. A good look for you. Oh yeah. Oliver slowing things down here in the fifth inning on what is becoming a very warm, very muggy day. One ball, no strikes. Foul back. Well, on a day like today, you'd love to have the ice water concession, the Pepsi Cola concession, the film concession. They are going through. I wouldn't mind the Budweiser concession. Well, that would be a real good concession. To have. And you could take a ride in that blimp that's flying high overhead. One ball, one strike. It's chop foul past third. They need to bring the Clydesdales back to this place. Of course, the brewery doesn't own the Cardinal franchise anymore. And the ownership, the new ownership group, deserves a tremendous pat on the back for all they have done for this franchise. They've made this stadium feel like a ballpark and not a multi purpose stadium. I think it's much better than it was at any time. And they've taken a ballpark that was fairly sterile and added a little character to it as we sweep around and show you the scoreboards, the world championship flags, the retired numbers. It's become a very nice looking place. One and two again to first. They want to pay close attention to Johnson. He has stolen eight bases. It is only a two to nothing Cardinal game. 
There's that manual scoreboard and if you tilt down just a little bit you'll see the post dispatch sign where Big Mac hit the scoreboard. One ball two strikes the pitch. Dances down and in two and two. I think the best thing that they did here as well as the aesthetics around the ballpark was put in the natural surface. Well, I know the players are happy about that. It's for a much better ballpark. Jeff Blauser was telling a story that when playing for the Braves he wore those plastic spikes they actually melted on the turf. There's a high fly ball hit deep down the left field line. Gant on the run nearing the line runs out of real estate. And Jose has another swing on the house here. Well, it would get to on the field 135 140 degrees at times during those very warm July and August days. I remember pitching here on a July 4th losing 10 pounds. Didn't go to the distance that day. It was an angry five I'm sure. Oh, no it was seven and a third. I remember it. And it was very uncomfortable. Two and two the pitch. A roller again foul. Good at bat here by Jose Hernandez who despite all the heroics of Sammy Sosa and Kerry Wood this year Mickey Morandini as well. This guy has really come out of nowhere to be certainly the Cubs most versatile player this year. This man wanted to be traded in spring training because he never felt he would get a chance to play every day. Well with the Cubs trading Kevin Ory to Florida and picking up Gary Gaiety and Jeff Bowser being hurt he's gotten to play a lot and he's produced. Two and two. Line to the shortstop. That's caught. And Johnson back to first. Polanco thought he trapped it, but no, he caught it on the fly. And there's out number two for Mark Grace. Well, he wanted it to just drop out of the glove and get a double play and not have to worry about Grace and maybe Sosa. But it did stay in the glove. And Larry Poncino says, indeed. Jose is out so he's hit the ball hard three times but has one for three to show for it. And now Mark Grace the hitter he's 0 for 2. He's flied to left and bounced to first. And Oliver definitely wants to get him because Sammy's waiting on deck. And if Mark does keep it alive Sammy could put the Cubs on top with one swing of the bat. The great fans here in St. Louis gave Sosa a standing ovation when he batted for the first time today. Sammy tipped his cap to the most appreciative crowd. When McGuire hit the home run, Sosa was clapping and right. McGuire even came out of the dugout for the curtain call, pointed out to Sammy, and gave the old trademark V sign out to Sammy in right field. They've got Johnson picked off if McGuire can make a good throw. He did, and the inning is over. Johnson got picked off with the heart of the order due up. That's not good base running. So the Cubs run themselves out of the fifth inning and trail two to nothing. Well, nothing comes between these Redbirds and their fans. A standing ovation for you know who. Here comes Big Mac in the fifth. He's one away from owning the record all by himself. 61 McGuire homers. He's two out of two. And here comes the Morgan pitch. Breaking ball hit high in the air. Shallow center field. Lance Johnson's got it. And there's out number one. So Mac two out of three. And boy he's going up there at the first pitch every time man. He's just. Well, he, got, away. he got a breaking ball out over the plate. It was probably in the spot he wanted it, but he just got under it. So the last base hit in the third, he got on top of. This one he got under. But he's still two for three. And the bigger news is 61. So he leads Sosa by three. And here is Lankford. Now the crowd again heads to the turnstile, heads to the concession stand to cool off as Langford looks at a ball. So much has been made, Stoney, about the fact that McGuire and Sosa are both pushing each other during this record chase. In 61, it was Maris and then Mickey Mantle before he got hurt. 
with Babe Ruth. It was that great 27 Yankees team. It was also Lou Gehrig. And, and I think that it helped both men to have someone else to shoot for instead of just an obscure record and the ghost of Roger Maris. I think that on an everyday basis, Sammy keeps saying that Mark is the man, and Mark has started to say Sammy is the man, and you kind of take the emphasis away from what you're trying to accomplish. I think it's helped take the pressure off both of these guys. And it's obviously graphically illustrated in Mark McGuire just loosening up so much over the last three weeks. He was tight as a drum most of this year, complaining about being a caged animal and a number of other things. And now he seems to be really enjoying each and every moment because this is just a special season for both of these guys, one that might never be repeated again. So you might as well take advantage of the fact that you might pass this road only one time and greet every game with that feeling that it is special. And I know now Big Mac is doing it, and Sammy's pretty much done it all year long. I think in holding his accomplishments and his season in perspective, Nobody could have possibly done it any better than Sammy Sosa right from the beginning of this year. And you pointed out, Chip, that it could very well be that Sammy was in no way, shape, or form intended to even be there. Well, if it, it is kind of a play on words considering the Cubs standing and considering what they're shooting for now, but he really was the wild card this year. Everybody thought from day one it was going to be McGuire and Griffey. McGuire and Griffey, and that's all you heard. In fact, talking to Tony LaRusso on Saturday, he said, from day one of spring training, that's all Mark McGuire heard was that he was going to challenge Maris's home run race by hitting 61 or more in this 1998 season. And Tony said to me that from day one of spring training, he was a devastating home run hitter. So having to live up to that was the biggest challenge of all. Now, of course, Maris and Mantle, all the Yankee fans wanted Mickey Mantle to do it. He was considered the heir apparent. Maris was an outsider. And rightfully or not, that was how a lot of people in New York felt. Well, Mandel was the Yankee. He was raised by the Yankees, brought to the major leagues by the Yankees, and epitomized what the Yankees of that era were all about. And that's why they were rooting for Mickey to break it. And for a long time, that race was very heated between the two. But yet, they were their own support system. And that's what McGuire and Sosa have been for each other here in this 98 campaign. And again, no matter what happens, I just hope and pray that some writer, some broadcaster does not have the audacity to say that because one man hits one or two or three more home runs than either one of those guys, that one had a better year than the other. Because you can't have a better year <laughs> than another guy with the kinds of numbers that these men are putting up. The runner at first goes, the pitch is high, the throw to second is going to short hop and deflect into shallow center field but Langford steals his 20th base of the year. No chance for Scott service although it is a very bad throw to second and that's one of the things the Cubs are going to have to address somehow somewhere they cannot stop the opposing base runners from stealing. And that's two today for Langford and it puts him in scoring position so in a tight game if walks turn into doubles if singles turn into doubles then it takes base hits to score runs and it's tough to win that way. Good speed in the box good speed at second the one one with one out fastball swung right through it. It's now one and two. If you can throw a good breaking ball low and away or a sinker low and away to Gant. You're going to retire him because he's trying to pull everything. And has been most of this year now he's awfully strong. And some would say you just keep throwing the ball up and into him, but there's a small margin for error up and in. The pitch. There's that breaking ball. Two and two. Well, Sosa got hot in the month of June. He hit 20 that month for the Cubs. And take a look after the first two months of the season. Sammy was 14 back, and seemingly Big Mac was on his way to a route. And it hasn't worked out that way. The 2 2 in the dirt three balls two strikes with Tatis waiting next. If Morgan doesn't keep an eye on Langford at second he is going to steal third. He got a huge jump as if to test just how far he could go. Morandini is the closest to him he has to be because Gant hits a lot of balls to the left side. But Morgan's going to have to take a couple of looks at second and make sure that Langford doesn't go. 
Three balls, two strikes. The Morgan pitch. Another walk. That's six in the game now. Two on, one out. And I don't think that we're going to see Mike Morgan any longer. He's gone four and four and two thirds, and it looks to me like today he's destined for four and a third innings of work. So it's been three starts, and Morgan probably will not have seen the sixth inning in any of them. But let's see what Jim Riggleman has in mind. You have to tease up, and you have the bullpen ready. It looks to me like with Mark Grace walking back to his position that he's going to allow Morgan in the game. So now you hope for a sinker and a ground ball and hopefully get out of the inning. Six walks from Morgan in the game. And Tatis the hitter 0 for 1. He's drawn one of those six walks. The game has slowed to a snail's pace. But as far as I'm concerned we can play forever. It's like to see Sammy and Mark McGuire get as many at bats. As they can with Sammy maybe one or two more. Morgan misses ball one. You just have to hope that a very young Tatis expands that strike zone and maybe gets himself out on a ground ball out of the zone. It is hard to walk Tatis. But he's on the verge of doing that. Two and zero. Oh. 0 oh, 4 and 0 oh for the Cubs. Two runs, three hits, one error for St. Louis. The Cardinals have won six of seven. The Cubs have won nine of 11. Give you an idea how hard it is to walk to TC. He's walked 30 times in 460 at bats. One of those times was in the third inning. Runners lead the 2 0. -oh. Missed it, 2 and 1. Well, that's why he doesn't walk very much. That was a slider out of the zone. And Tatis tried to hit it into Big Mac land in left field. Another game in St. Louis tomorrow night. Steve Traxel, Kent Merker. <laughs> we'll have it for you at 7 o'clock here on WGN. And the Cubs home to take on the Pirates. The Cardinals visit Cincinnati. Snap throw back to first. The runner back safely. And the count evens 2-2. Two and two. Morgan laboring into the fifth. It's only a two nothing game. But the Cubs offense. Hasn't been able to solve Darren Oliver yet. <laughs> Missed with it three and two. And you wonder with very good speed on the bases if they're going to be going. And if Morgan is able to extricate himself from this jam. With six walks through four and a third innings, it would be a monumental accomplishment. Normally, when you do that, you're giving up five or six runs. Three balls, two strikes. The Cub pen is ready. The payoff pitch is runner's lead. They don't go. The delivery ground ball is foul. Off to the left side. McGuire started the inning. He popped into center on the first pitch. Langford walked, stole second. Gant walked for the second time today. Now, with Morgan out there and a right hander in the pen, you think about John Mabry as a pinch hitter for Polanco if Tatis reaches base. And he's murdered the Cubs all year, too. The 3 2. Bouncing ball, Morgan's got it. Second base one, flip to first. Close play, but in time. Morgan starts the double play, and the Cardinals are retired in the fifth. Here comes Grace. Here comes Sosa. Here comes Glenn Allen Hill as we head to the sixth inning. On we go to the sixth inning. Mark Grace, Sammy Sosa, Glenn Allen Hill. It's a 2 0 Cardinal lead. Our senior producer director of Cubs baseball is Arnie Harris. Today's game produced by John Walgren. Our associate producer is the commander Pete Toma. Our coordinating producer is Kim Fields. The executive producer of WGN Sports is Bob Vorwald. My name is Chip Carey. I'm along with Steve Stone from Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis. Where the big story is of course Big Mac. And Darren Oliver shutting down the Cubs so far. 
Let's hope that Mark Grace can get aboard for Sammy Sosa and he can tie it up with one swing. The Cubs have managed to stay close. And Mike Morgan has managed to walk the tightrope through six walks, but only three hits. Outside, 2 0. Oh. A walk here would look awfully good. And it would help take the sting out of just a terrible base running play by Lance Johnson getting picked off to end that fifth inning. Again, Big Mac hit his 61st home run in the 143rd game of the championship season. And when you factor in all the walks Mark McGuire has gotten this year, that is ridiculous. 147 bases on balls for McGuire on the year. He leads the league in on base percentage, something that you never see happen to a slugger. Grace, strike two, three and two. You look at an on base percentage of 471. Bonds is second, Walker is third, Olerud is fourth, Sheffield fifth. High fly ball hit to left. Gantz under it. He's going to make the catch. One down. Somewhat amazingly, Chip, you have to go a long way down to find Biggio at 404, the only leadoff hitter among the on base percentage leaders. Very interesting. Well, here comes Sammy again. He's 0 for 2. He popped out to McGuire in the first. Struck out looking on a dandy breaking ball from Oliver to end the Cubs third. Sosa with 58 homers, 140 driven in. Against the Cardinals this year, he's hit two homers. And Oliver misses low ball one. I've seen some sports writer friends at the ballpark from all over the country. Television people from all over the country just to see the two guys you're looking at. He laid off 2-0. Crowd booing. They want Sosa to gain some ground today. They don't want any walks to either of those two guys. I don't want any walks either, dog. Got to throw it down the middle. Let's see what he can do with it. 119 home runs combined, and you're looking at it on your screen. Awesome. The 2-0. Home run cut. 2-1. and one. Of Sosa's homers, 32 of them have been of the solo variety. Maybe another one here it would cut the lead in half for the Cardinals. The wind the two one swung aligned hard down the right field line but out of play. Two and two again he got him with a breaking ball last time. After working him away he got him with an inside curveball. And he was looking at you guys. You think there's enough coverage for this one. Two balls, two strikes, the line, the pitch is high. He's got to come to him now, three and two. Well, I the would man think on deck has crushed Oliver this year. I wouldn't think he's going to a curveball here. I would just look for a fastball. He has a two-run lead. As Big Mac just patiently stands by. The three-two. Fastball, foul tipped, caught by Marrero. And Sosa for three. Two down. Well, give a little credit to Darren Oliver. He just went right at him with what for him is his best pitch. That's the fastball. And Sammy took his best cut and came up empty. Two strikeouts today. Oliver has been mystifying through five and two thirds. And now Glenn Allen Hill bounces the ball up the middle to his right to Shields off balance throwing time. The Cubs go quickly and quietly in the sixth. Bottom half rolls around. Lower third of the Cardinal order is due. They lead it to zip. Well, you knew the commissioner of baseball, Bud Selig, would be in St. Louis on a day like today. He and Stan the Man Musial chatting in one of the boxes field side on a very hot afternoon for baseball in St. Louis. And we had Stan in our booth. He was a guest conductor, played a little harmonica for us, and it's hard to believe that there is a nicer man anywhere than Stan Musial. Well, he I is think, wonderful and a beloved character here. And I think he's going to have to come up with a new tune on the harmonica, the Mark McGuire blow or something <laughs> like that. I don't know what you'd call it, but he's got to work on his repertoire after Big Mac has had the kind of year he has had. And there's the young man that caught the baseball. He's talking to his press agent, People Magazine. He'll have deals that come in a plenty. 
Well, that man and the man or young lady that catches number 62. Well, Polanco, Oliver, and Marrero here in the Cardinal sixth. And there's a strike from Mike Morgan. Well, Jim, Jim Riggleman showed a lot of faith in Mike Morgan because in a jam in the fifth, with six rock walks already under his belt, he allowed him to get himself out of the inning, and he threw a double play ground ball. Polanco hits a fly ball into right field that Sammy's going to catch. One away. Polanco's 0 for 3, and now Oliver bats. He's 0 for 2 today. It's only 2 0 in favor of the Cardinals. And they're watching this game, as we told you, all over the world, including down in La Romana of the Dominican Republic. Big Cup fan Daniel Corsaro from the Gia Cosa Restaurante is watching things today. He says, beautiful to beautiful weather down in the Dominican Republic. He's at the Casa de Campo Paradise, 86 degrees and beautiful warm waters. Well, if he's at a restaurant, have him send something up. That would be awesome. A little plantain action before the seventh inning stretch would be all over that, man. Paella. Paella would be good. Extra clams for Arnie. Yeah, we could have apple or boysenberry paella. That'd be good. A la mode, the 0-2. That would be interesting. Oliver strikes out, two down. Morgan has struck out three men now. And Eli Marrero, who has also homered in the game, the next man to greet him. Morgan has held the Cardinals to just three hits. Two of them, though, left the ballpark. And again, you made the point earlier, and I think it bears repeating a sinker baller. A little strong early. That's when the Cardinals scored their single runs in the first and in the second inning. Well, that's when they're most vulnerable. And so the only thing that's hurt Morgan today, and the only thing that's put him in trouble after the first two innings has been his control. Both home runs by the Cardinals came with two men out. That's the scenario here for Marrero. And he looks at a ball though from big Mike Morgan. Wonder what the record book will say about McGuire when he has the record all by himself. Now officially there was never an asterisk next to the Roger Maris mark. There was, however, a notation as to the number of games that he played, which many people felt was as good as an asterisk, as did I. That has since been removed. Babe Ruth's season was much shorter than that of the one Roger Maris played in back in 1961. Again, McGuire ties him in the 143rd game of the year. I don't think there will be any notation other than that he hit the ball awfully far. And I think a lot of people have a tendency to think Chip when he does break the record that this is over and it isn't there's a long way to go and he could break the record first and Sammy then could pass him by because Sammy hits his home runs in bunches and he's done that throughout his career so just because Mark gets there first that doesn't necessarily mean that the epitaph for that race or this season is over three two. Out straight back by Marrero. Two outs, base is empty. A 3 2 count due to Marrero before he looks at this Morgan pitch. Let's pause for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN, Chicago. 3 and 2 for Morgan. Hit high in the air into left center field. Johnson turning the wrong way, catches up to it, puts it away. And the inning is over. Nothing doing for the Redbirds in the sixth. On to the seventh we go. Gaiety, Morandini, and service in a 2 nothing Cardinal game. On today's Discover Card Payback Playback, in June of 1989, Sammy Sosa smashed his first career homer against the Rocket. Roger Clemens at Fenway Park. It was the only home run Sammy Sosa hit while playing for the Texas Rangers. His inaugural Major League home run by Sammy Sosa. Today's Discover Card Payback Playback. Man, that is an unbelievable shot. He looks like Julio Franco running around the bases, doesn't he? Sammy looks like a little shortstop when he hit his first home run. Now he looks like a linebacker. Well, that was his first big league home run against Roger Clemens, who might win the Cy Young Award over in the American League. He has been unbelievable for Toronto. Uh, Gary Gaiety smash into center field, sends Lankford on the run at the track at the wall. Long 
long solo home run for Gaetti, and we've got a one run game. His 15th homer, his 57th driven in. And finally, the Cubs break through against Darren Oliver. I think the bullpen probably will get up and going. And the fans here giving Gary Gaetti, who was a crowd favorite, a huge round of applause and a standing ovation. So it's now two to one. And the news in New York getting better for the Mets. The tarp is coming off at Shea Stadium. They expect to resume play in about 15 minutes there. And all the Mets the, enjoying the lead. All the runs here today via the home run. A 2 1 game in the seventh. Now Morandini a rope to right. And the Cubs are starting to time Oliver now, and the Cardinal bullpen, which has been porous for much of the year, starts to get busy. This fastball right down the middle, and Gary Gaetti has his second hit of the day and his 15th home run of the year as Langford gives it the run and looks up and it's gone. So things starting to get interesting as Dave Duncan will trot to the mound. Well, the Cubs trying to get off the Schneid here in St. Louis. The Cubs 0 and 3 in the Redbirds' nest. Lost 16 to 3 on August 7th, 9 to 8 and 13 innings on the 8th, and then that 2 to 1 heartbreaker on the 9th. Busby the right-hander, Painter the left-hander, and now Gary Darling going out to break up the meeting at the mound. And you have a couple of things that you can do if you're Scott Service and Jim Riggleman. One is the hit and run because Scott is very good at that. And the other you think about the bunt because you know you're going to a pinch hitter and it looks like Matt Mieske in the on deck circle. So let's see what Scott can do here. He's 0 for 2. He's fly to left. He's fly to right. Let's see if he can fly one right out of the ballpark here. Oliver's given up one run. Scott shows bunt. Bunts it in the air to the right side. He put a lot of backspin on it. McGuire flips to first and got it. Good sacrifice runner to second with one man out. It looked like a nice little wedge shot that was not going to roll foul so McGuire had to play it almost flipped it into right field. Scott service pops it up but nobody can get close enough on the fly and then McGuire throws it a little wide of the bag but the shields able to keep the foot on the bag as he makes the play. Well, that could have been a huge break for the Cubs and disastrous for the Cardinals. So Matt Mieske comes on hitting 200 as a pinch hitter but when he was here he was swinging the bat awfully well he was hitting 308 and he asked well why did they send him down then one of the reasons was it was actually almost a trade off the Glenn Allen Hill for Matt Mieske they both filled the same kind of role and Ed Lynch thought that Glenn Allen Hill could provide a lot more power. And so Miski wasn't sent down because he wasn't doing the job because the fact is that he was It's just that Glenn Allen Hill could supply the long ball and he has done just that. Well one of those here would be real nice. And that's going to be it for Oliver so he will go as far as he can go. As Tony La Russa comes out to make the change. And he's going to go to the left hander. Lance Painter here with Miski do up. Interesting move here. He's sticking with the lefties as Oliver goes six innings and one third. He surrenders one run on six hits. Nice hand for the young left-hander who did his job today. Mike Morgan did his for the Cubs as well. Back with more after this. On this hot muggy day Big Mac looks on he hit number 61 earlier in the day and now left hander Lance Painter comes on trying to protect a one run Cardinal lead here in the top half of the seven. Painter at 4 0 ERA 429 on for the 58th time and you might ask yourself you're Tony La Russa why do you bring in the left hander to replace a left hander with a right hand pinch hitter and that is because Tony La Russa figured that there was a little more thunder on the left side as far as a pinch hitter is concerned and. So he didn't want to see perhaps Brant Brown in this situation so he brings in Painter who's thrown the ball pretty well. And as he continues to warm up if you're searching for the comprehensive coverage of the Cubs as they five for playoff contention well look no further 
Fine Line, the Cubs monthly newspaper, provides a complete package of Cubs coverage for fans nationwide. Fine Line's just $19.95, and two year subscribers get a free copy of the Ryan Sandberg commemorative program. Call 773 404 Cubs to order, or join us on our internet website, www.cubs.com. And another factor when you're looking ahead, and Tony La Russa, a very well prepared manager, he knows that if he went to Busby, then you not only get a left hand hitter, but then you probably have to go to the left hander against Johnson, who's in the on deck circle. This way you can stay with the left handed painter. And the Cubs now within one, but they've got the tying run in scoring position. So here's Miski against Lance Painter. With Mickey Morandini, the runner at second in a one run game. Way outside, one and oh, I know I'm guilty of it today. You've been treated to one of the great moments in baseball history. Now you got to get back and worry about trying to win this ball game. It's not just about Big Mac and Sammy today for the Cubs or tomorrow. The Cubs in a playoff fight for their lives today. The pitch bounces away. Morandini had a thought of going, but Marrero picked it off. Good stop by Eli Marrero as he blocks a pitch down. So Painter has come in with, at least for the moment, the inability to get the ball over the plate. And he's had trouble in that department. 27 walks in 42 innings, and that's not real good. Two balls, no strikes. Missed Wood, 3-0. Lance Johnson waiting on deck. This has been a real bad bullpen this year. And that's one of the reasons why the Cardinals have struggled. 3 0. He missed with that one. Four straight pitches out of the zone, puts two on with one out. Painter this year against the Cubs. Six innings, three hits, four walks now, and six strikeouts. So two are on for Lance Johnson. Lance has not had the most sterling of days. He's 0 for 2 with a walk, and then he got picked off with the heart of the order due up. What a chance for redemption here in the seventh inning. And a strike is called. Well, relief in sight on this hot day. The vanilla and chocolate ice cream, albeit a little bit soupy, is here. It all goes down good on a hot day in St. Louis. Nothing in one, two to one Cardinal game. I used to live on that stuff when the Braves would come to town with my dad. Of course, you could tell by my physique that that was the case. Ooh, Last time out, Pander pitched one inning and fanned everyone. He will not be able to do that today. One and one. Right through there. Strike two call. The Cubs have left runners on base a lot today again. Five of them in the first four innings. You figure that for Painter, this likely will be the last man he'll face one way or the other. You have Busby still throwing and Jose Hernandez in the on deck circle. One, two. Went sidearm. And Marrero, a very nice stop. And the count even to no advance by the base runner. Well, fortunately, Painter missed the fact that Polanco was standing right on the bag with a chance to pick off Mickey Morandini. And had Lance Johnson hit that ball, there was nobody at shortstop. You've got to look back there a couple of times because even if you're not going to make a pickoff attempt, you have to step off. You can't allow your defense to be pulled out of position. And I think that's where he looked at Polanco. He just said, my fault. A hit would mean a run. Mickey's got good speed out at second base. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch. He hung it and he grounded it foul. Dan Radisson with a great play over at first. Makes the young man very happy as he flips the souvenir into the stands. And all of Dan's fans here in the Metropolitan St. Louis area. Seeing him in live and in living color. Two and two. 
Runners lead first and second now. Again, the pitch to Lance. Swung on, high fly ball, hit to shallow left center field. Langford's there, he's got it. And there's out number two. Well, now let's see what's on the mind of Tony La Russa. Jose Hernandez has been up three times, and he's hit the ball right on the nose all three times. And Dave Duncan pointing to the pin. It looks like Busby coming in. Busby was the man who was up. He will get the call. Painter becomes the third Cardinal pitcher of the inning. Cubs have him first and second now. Two outs in the seventh. It's up to Jose if the Cubs are to tie the game or take the lead here in St. Louis. Mike Busby takes over for the Cardinals now. He'll face Jose Hernandez. Busby at 5 and 1 this year, ERA 497 on for the 18th time. And there you look at the numbers. And he inherits Cub base runners at first and second. So the tying and go ahead run on the bases for Jose Hernandez, who swung the bat very well today. Speaking of swinging the bats well, how about Toronto? 15 to 1, they pummeled the Cleveland Indians at Skydo, but for the Indians, take solace. Really only counts for 9.7 runs. The runs don't count quite as much when they're in Canada. 40% yeah. less in Canada. Maybe Busby will add to those very poor st statistics here in the seventh inning. Inherited runners stranded. Just one of nine. Wow. That gives That's you a lot really of good. A lot of confidence if you're Oliver and Painter. But Busby has pretty decent stuff, and let's see if Jose Hernandez can help him get down to about 9% or so in that statistic. Jose came into today's game one for his last 14. He's one for three today, a single in the first, reached on a Polanco error in the third, and then lined out to the shortstop his last time up. Here's Jose. Morandini at second, Miski at first. Two to one now, the Cardinal lead. Gary Guide, he led the inning off with a solo home run for the Cubs, his 14th since coming over as a free agent. With two outs and runners in scoring position, Jose has been pretty good this year, getting up close to 300. And don't go away, folks, because Big Mac is due up third in the seventh. But first things first. Busby ready to go. The right hander sets and fires. Steer right call, 0 and 1. Busby, a big right hander at 6'4, 210 pounds. Out of Lomita, California. Now lives in Glendale, Arizona, on the west side of town. Nothing and one. Jose steps back out. Big Mac is homer. Sammy Sosa 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts today in St. Louis. Matthew McGuire on hand to watch his dad tie Roger Maris's record. The 0 1. Swung on, hit high in the air. Not much carry to it. Jordan back in the shadows. Makes the grab and the inning is over. One run, two hits, two more Cub runners left. Seventh inning stretch time in St. Louis. And Mark McGuire is due up third. Here come the Cardinals in the bottom of inning number seven. New pitcher on the mound for the Cubs here in St. Louis, self proclaimed Baseball City, USA, and they are great fans. It's right hander Matt Karchner. Karchner has been pretty good for the Cubs at 3 0, 540 ERA overall, 5 4, a 524 ERA. On for the 21st time as a Cub. And Delano to Shields and the top of the order will greet him with McGuire due up third. So Morgan did a pretty good job, leaves trailing two to one. DeShields stands in and takes a strike. Delano 0 for 3 today. You're right about Morgan. Six innings, three hits, two runs, both home runs. He walked six and struck out three. So although he didn't have his pinpoint control, he kept the Cubs in the ball game, but he trails it by a run. Kirchner said he's just starting to feel good again. He's had his season interrupted by a hernia, later a groin problem. And so now 
with his lower half healthy. He's hoping to keep his upper half healthy. The 1-1. One, one. Two balls and a strike. Shields is awfully fast and so if you keep him off base you can usually hold down this lineup and that's what's happened today. Cubs have held him to just two to Shields at 0 for 3. The pitch is inside. Well we told you they're watching this game from around the world. We told you fans watching in Sammy Sosa's native land the Dominican Republic. Jason Wilson. Of the 4411th rescue squadron watching the game in Kuwait today. It's probably a little warm over there at this point and the wind is blowing out. Come rescue us from this heat and the Mac attack here in St. Louis. You can't Kuwait for that big guy to hit. I could have Kuwaited for you to say that. Though. <laughs> Three and two. Swung on line deep toward right. Sammy back as far as he can go. And Delano to Shields is hit a leadoff homer here in the seventh inning. Every run today, all four. Three for the Cardinals, one for the Cubs, courtesy of the long ball. The sixth hit by the Shields. RBI number 38. So Delano just back off the disabled list with his first hit today. And he greets Matt Karshner rather rudely. So just like that it's a 3 1 Cardinal game now. And while the fans are excited about that they're saying doggone it the wrong guy hit the homer here in the inning. But well, I know it was the wrong chance. colored uniform. So it's a 3 1 game for Brian Jordan. Hot shot toward third. Guy he handles. Crow hops to first. Here comes McGuire with one out. First baseman. Now, here is where it gets McGuire. interesting. Every time McGuire bats, Major League Baseball is using a specially coded ball so that there will be no way for a fan to lie and say that they caught the home run ball. Right, they'll be able to examine it. They haven't told anyone what exactly they're doing or how to identify that baseball, but they will know every time he comes to bat now if it is indeed. The historic number 62. First pitch is high to McGuire. And Mike Morgan has given up 61. His young son looking on. You wonder if Matt Karsner ever considered the fact that he might have the opportunity to give up 62. The 1 0. Swan popped up toward us. And out of play. All Sammy can do is look on as Mark McGuire takes his thunderous hacks here in St. Louis. And Sammy knows that he will be due up second in the eighth inning. The 1-1. One, one. Missed outside. The fans that they had done on both sides have booed every called ball to each hitter, both Sosa and McGuire. Two and one now. Swung line into center field and Johnson. Oh boy, that ball a sinking liner, but he caught it. Four out number two. So McGuire, two out of four. Big Mac catches this one off the end of the bat. You can see at that shot that he did not get it even close to the sweet spot. And now they go back to the regular baseball. That's pretty cool though. I think it's pretty nice and it also stops any confusion as to just who did catch the historic home run. What would really be neat is if we could get Arnie Harris to have a baseball cam inside the baseball and watch its yeah. trajectory as it heads over the fence. That would be awesome. One ball no strikes to Lankford. You don't think there'll be a little scrambling for that baseball do you. No, they're very civil in the outfield they'll just 
What I would love to see in all honesty is nothing against the fans but I'd love to see the ball ricochet off the facade somewhere and go right back out in the field of play so there's no doubt nobody gets hurt. High pop left side and into the seats. Problem is McGuire. The only facade McGuire hits is the one in the upper deck or beyond. And it's a little tough for the ball to ricochet back that far. The home run he hit today got out of the park so quickly and did ricochet off the facade. But the only doubt, not to the fact that it was going to be a home run, would it stay fair long enough? And it just did. Two and one. Hold to the right side and pass Mark Grace into right field for a two out Lankford hit. His first safety of the day. He's one for two with a couple of walks. He meant having a little trouble with the left handers, and from the right field camera, we will show you a good effort by Mark Grace as he dives to his right, but comes up a little short. And now you've got to get by Ron Gant and keep this a two run game so that if Mark Grace does get aboard to lead off the eighth inning, Sammy will have a chance to tie it. Ron Gant the batter now. Gant's had an interesting day. He's walked twice. He's been hit by a pitch. And Karchner misses with ball one. Now Matt has had some problems keeping base runners close and Langford already has two steals. I would think that he would test out the arm of Scott service. And Scott looking over in the dugout to see if he might want to pitch out but that would be a little dangerous at one and oh already. One oh. This is where Gant gets dangerous because he loves the ball middle in. He would prefer it down. And well ahead of Karshner, he's just looking fastball all the way. And he is enormously strong. The stretch now, the 2 0 instead to first. We had a former 30 30 man with the Atlanta Braves. He's signed to a long term contract, so they know they're going to have. Ray Langford around. They know they're going to have Ron Gant around. And might have Brian Jordan around. And whether they have Jordan around, you know, JD Drew is an outfielder. And they believe he's going to play next year. The runner goes, the pitch inside, and Scott has no chance. Well, again, Matt Karchner, if he is going to stay in the National League, and I would assume that the Cubs have plans for Matt for the next couple of years. He's got to work on holding base runners close. He gets such a huge jump that even though this one is high and in, there's not a catcher in baseball that could have made that play at second base. 3 0. A green light at him and he missed it. Three balls and a strike. And this gives me an opportunity to tell you, Chip, on this, this day in St. Louis. With the years I spent with your grandfather, I'm going to give you the opportunity to be the first one to read a book that I just completed on your grandfather. Oh, that's right. And it's going to be coming out after the first of the year. I wanted to wait a bit to get my thoughts clear. There's a lot of people who knew Harry, but not a lot of people who really knew him. And so the book Where's Harry will come out after the first of the year. Where's I'll ha give you a little preview. That's that's the name of the book. Where's Harry? Where's Harry? As Gant walks with two outs, first and second, Cardinals have already extended their lead now to three and one. The reason why, or for the title, was that when I first got to the Cubs, and all through our 15 years together, that is the single question that everyone asked me every day, regardless of where I went. It was as if they believed that we were living together or rooming together on the road. It was always where's Harry. And that's a question I that like it. at this point we all would like to know definitively. Yes I'm sure we would. <laughs> well, I just hope he's looking down and not up. Well, I think he is looking at this year. I know Sammy was very gracious to Harry in the press conference. He said at the beginning of the year he dedicated this year to Harry and he thinks that he is indeed looking down at all of us and I'm sure that he's enjoying this year as much as all of us are. One ball no strikes the pitch. It's strike one call. How long did it take you to write the book. Well, it was written really over the course of a couple of years and I wrote it with Barry Rosner. 
And Barry Rosner wrote uh, the book on Ryan Sandberg, who was a great favorite of your grandfather's, as you know, and he's a wonderful writer. And I read a little sum to Arnie Harris. He was laughing quite a bit on the plane, so it should be interesting. And it is a, it is a humorous book, and it's a book that will allow folks to really get a chance to know some of the inside stories about Harry and our 15 years together, and really just the uniqueness of the man, because he was a very funny man. Well, I'm looking forward to reading it myself, and you're going to try to have it out by the Cubs convention, right? Absolutely. Two balls and a strike. There's a drive hit deep toward left. If it's fair, it's gone. Foul. Just foul. Wow. Uh, did, Matt, you might want to try to <laughs> not throw another one like that. Boy, the T hit that one a mile. And Mike Winters, who had been called on earlier to make a historic call, this time taking the same look. Only this time, as far as the Cubs were concerned, a much better outcome as he pointed to the stands instead of toward the field. That was a rocket. And there is the man that called number 61, Mike Winters. Two balls, two strikes. Cardinals three, Cubs one in the seventh. Off the end of his bat foul, stays two and two. That was a pretty decent slider, and you'd think that one more forthcoming and you'd get him. Again, Tati swings at most anything. You don't have to necessarily throw him a strike to get him out. And for Mike Morgan, Tatis was the biggest out as he induced him to ground back into a double play in what could have been for Mike probably the last hitter for him. Instead, he got through six and kept it at two to one. Again, the two two. Slider takes care of Tatis and the Cardinals, but they had a run on the Delano to shield Tomer leading off this inning. We head to the eighth inning. Sammy Sosa due up second in a 3 1 Cardinal game. Three one Cardinals. Sammy Sosa due up second here in the eighth. All the runs in this game have been hit by solo home run. Three by the Cardinals, one by Gary Gaetti today. And it's appropriate because these are two of the most prodigious home run hitting teams in the league. The Atlanta Braves lead, but the Cardinals now nipping at their heels with their three home runs today. And the Cubs, a very similar team in that they do most of their scoring via the long ball, and they've got to come back in a critical game for them, as just about everyone is from here on out. So Grace 0 for 3 on the day. Happy to see a right hander in there, and he looks at a strike. Marks fly to left twice. He's bounced out to Big Mac once. John Mabry takes over in right field, and he is a Cub torturer. Gotta watch out for that guy. And it's outside, 1 1. Sammy next. Well, he's seen Big Mac hit 61, and he's three back. Right through there, one and two. Bear in mind something. This bullpen has been very generous this year. They've blown a lot of saves. More than any team in baseball. And so that gives you hope with six outs to go. One and two. Inside corner fastball freezes Grace, and he's 0 for 4. I think he has a word for Gary Darling. Not very happy with that call. And you don't see Mark Grace argue very often. We'll watch it again as Grace obviously looking for something away. He got this one. Darling thought it was good enough. And that's a big out for Busby. For now Sosa can do nothing but bring the Cubs to within a run. Sammy 0 for 3 today has struck out twice. Sosa with 58 home runs. What is it 19 times this year when. Either Sosa or McGuire have homered. The other one has two. The pitch right through there. Strike one. Boy, they're keeping the ball away from it. I think with the last home run in Pittsburgh, it might be 20. It is 20. And good news out of New York. Atlanta has scored a run in the top of the fourth as they resume play. The 0-1 way outside. One ball, one strike. 
It's now four to two in the fourth. Braves continue to battle on against the Mets. Need some help from Atlanta today. They helped us yesterday, but the Cubs could not take advantage. One ball, one strike from Busby. The pitch. Fouled off his body one and two. Well, the Cardinals today, unlike some of the other teams, have not tried to get inside too often on Sammy. They've been content to stay away. They did it in Pittsburgh, and Sammy responded by hitting two home runs to right and right center field. They've done it again here today. The only pitch he's seen inside was a beautiful curveball, probably the best Oliver threw all day, and he caught him looking in the third inning. Other than that, they have stayed away and stayed away consistently. Let's see if they do it again here. One ball, two strikes to Sammy Sosa in St. Louis. The pitch. Missed with it low, two and two. Buzz be ready. The wind, the two two. Breaking ball bounced through the hole left side for a Sosa base hit. So Sammy won for four. And we'll keep an eye on him as he heads back to the bag and a big hug for Mark McGuire. Well that's the first time they've been able to talk. On the base paths today. And you see the respect that each one of these great sluggers has for one another. Again we talked about the support system that Maris had with Mantle. And Sammy has with Mark McGuire. So now the tying run is in the batter's box in Glen Allen Hill and he fouls the ball away 0 1. I wish you'd uh, gotten a chance to see and I'm sure you'll see it on highlights on the WGN News. Pieces of the press conference that both of these sluggers held before the game today. It at times resembled a comedy routine. It was almost like Abbott and Costello as Mark McGuire gave Sammy the pitch to lob out of the ballpark. A rocket into right from Glen Allen Hill. Sosa big turnaround second. He's chugging toward third. Mabry with a very good arm hits the cutoff man first and third. With only one man out and you're right Sammy ought to have a comedy on the WB man he was <laughs> awesome. Well the Cubs trying to fight back here in the eighth inning against a very generous bullpen. As Glenn Allen Hill takes it through the right side. Sammy scampers to third. And he's running on a very good outfielder with a strong arm. And will isolate on Sammy Sosa as he looks where the ball is. And realizing that Mabry having to go to his left will have no chance at throwing to third. Boy, you gotta love the way Sosa has hustled all year long. And now the game on the bases for the Cubs. Ford Coyote who has Homer today and he gets hit by the pitch and the bases will be loaded. Boy, he's been a ball magnet. And that one hurt. That one really hurt. It's unbelievable how many times this guy's been hit since putting on a Cub uniform. He's going to stay in the ball game. He doesn't want Busby to know that it hurt him, but it did. It rocked him. Now we'll see how patient Tony LaRusse is going to be with Mike Busby, who's coming unraveled here in the eighth inning. This one sails up and in, catches him just above the elbow. And now we're going to see a pinch runner for Glenn Allen Hill and it's going to be Brant Brown. So Gaetti with the Cubs now. Has been hit by his fourth pitch in 18 games. And apparently that's going to be it for Busby. Who will stand to be the loser if the Cubs can take advantage of a golden opportunity here in the eighth. So Busby hits Gaetti Hill will be lifted for Brown. Sosa's at third base is loaded one man out in the eighth inning. It's a 3 1 Cardinal game. <laughs> Gary Gaiety hit by a pitch chatting with his former teammate Mark McGuire the Cardinals the Cubs have seen Big Mac. Hit number 61, but now the Cubs trying to hit back here in the eighth inning. They've loaded the bases, one man out, and Brian Eversgird becomes the fourth pitcher. 
Tatis talking it over with Sammy and Big Mac probably asking Gary Gaetti. Boy, did that feel good? You never got hit this much when you were with us. Gary Gaetti wondering if he's wearing a target when he goes up there. And Brian Eversgird coming in, and that could be good news for the Cubs. A 12.46 ERA on for the fifth time. Four and a third innings, eight hits. He is less than overpowering, and he inherits the bases loaded. As the Cubs, who trail by two, will send Mickey Morandini up to try to tie up the ball game. It's a three to one Cardinal game. Mickey has a one four three game going. He needs 11 hits for a thousand in his career. A base hit means one run for sure maybe two as Brown has great speed but the Cardinals have good arms in center and in right. The St. Louis team more blown saves than any team in baseball and the first pitch almost wild one and oh. What a stop by Marrero. On the ground ball in the infield, Gary Gaetti, who always goes in hard, is going to have to break up a double play. And this infield has been just awful defensively for the Cardinals. Already one error on the day by the shortstop, Polanco. The 1 0. Oh, outside. A walk means a run. 2 0. Oh. Three to one St. Louis. The pitch is through there for strike one. In this situation, more times than not, Mickey has come through and driven home at least a run. Get a very fast man at third in Sammy. Good speed at second in Brown. And Gary Gaetti at first. The two one. Swung on, bouncing ball could be two. Out at second. Bad throw. Throw the first, not in time. Cubs get a run. Well, we told you about this defense, and they don't do a whole lot to help themselves. That could have possibly been two, but with the throw by DeShields, pulling Polanco away from the play, there is no way you're going to get Morandini. So Mickey drives home an all important run, his 48th of the year. For DeShields, you see a good effort by Gaetti. Looked like an NFL lineman trying to leg whip his opponent as he tries to do anything he can to disrupt two. And they don't complete the double play, but the Cubs sneak within one. So they're at first and third for service. Who's 0 for 2 with a sacrifice? Outside ball one. Well, how big is that to Shields home run now in the seventh inning? That's the difference in the game. A 3 to 2 Cardinal affair in the eighth inning. Like to see a couple more hitters reach for the Cubs for not, not only will that tie the game, but it would give Sammy another crack in the ninth. 1 0. 2 0. Manny Alexander in the on deck circle. Of course, that means very little depending on who comes out of that bullpen if Eversgird cannot shut the door here in the eighth. Two balls, no strikes. Here it is. Swung, and he was right on it, fouled back. Ed Kaisik and Frascatore are warming in the Cardinal bullpen. Three to two, the Cardinals have the lead. Brad Brown, the tying run just 90 feet away. Here it is. Strike two. But Kaisik is kind of their right handed Terry Mulholland. He's done everything for this club. And by the way, Terry said that he could actually go in relief today. He said there's no stiffness at all. And he told Jim Riggleman, if you need me, I know you're short on left handers. I can go. That is the kind of guy Terry Mulholland is. I'd love to see us get him signed for next year and beyond. He's a gritty, gritty competitor. And I've mentioned it many times. He can play for my team anytime. 2 2. That hit it. Service hit by the pitch. 
play will be stopped and the bases will be loaded again. It's been a tough couple of days for Scott Service. And now he's going to come out. Jim Riggleman's going to come out talk with Gary Darling. I think he's asking if he did indeed get hit. And I think right there looks like he had to get hit. It hit off his foot because it redirected. And if you don't think he got hit, look at Scott hobbling around at first base. So for a guy who didn't get hit, you don't send out the trainer to see him. Well, a leg cramp yesterday and now a, a toe shot to the Tootsie. Yes. That got him right off the foot and it loads him up. the ballpark. Well they were supposed to be here about 315 330 only 20 minutes later or so but that was pretty cool. Maybe they'll zoom by again. Well Manny Alexander who's come through with so many big hits will have an opportunity again as Dave Duncan and Tony La Russa decide Instead of going with Frascatori or Petkaisic, they're going to go with Ebersgird, fresh off a hit batsman. So with the Cubs one down, a base hit probably puts the Cubs on top because you've got good speed in Morandini at second. And this guy's been the Cubs' hottest pinch hitter, Manny Alexander. Bases loaded, first pitch in the dirt, Marrero. Good stop, 1 0. Man, he's been the best pinch hitter in the league this year. The 1 0. Low 2 and 0. Well, now you know you're going to get a fastball. And you got a pretty good idea. It should be hittable. Eversgird has a less than overpowering fastball. The 2 0 -oh pitch. Right through there, he took it. 2 and 1. 42,877 paid attendance. However, when you <laughs> add up the freebies, 50,530 in the ballpark today. I don't believe I've ever seen a disparity between paid admissions and comp tickets and press credentials like the ballpark here today. Almost 8,000 of them. Only when you were pitching foul. Two <laughs> balls and a strike. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Ah, they're watching around the world. The Dominican Republic in Kuwait. They're watching in Orlando, Florida, too. Big Cub fan David Steele. And in Skokie, the home of Arnie Harris. Two and two. Eversger in all kinds of trouble. The stretch. The runners lead from every base and the pitch. Whoa, he just missed. A uh, great break for the Cubs in that now all the runners will be going. A double scores three. A base hit for sure scores two. And a huge pitch for Eversger. Three balls, two strikes. What a game in St. Louis. Here it is. Swung on, popped up. Right side. McGuire near the stands. And it's out of play. That, that might have been ball four. Manny swung at ball four. That one was up and out of the zone. But sometimes it's pretty tough to check your swing. And he helped him out there. Well, we're in a beer and brat kind of town. Let's see if Manny can come through with a big hit and we can go celebrate with a big German dinner here in St. Louis. Three and two. That's an inside joke, by the way. I'll tell you about it after the pitch. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. The Cubs load the bases again and continue to struggle. With key situational scoring opportunities. The Cardinals give up a run but lead it 3 2, middle of the eighth inning.
Brad Brown stays in the game to play left field. New pitcher for the Cubs, right hander Rodney Myers. And as he warms up Stoney, sometimes it's the little things in baseball that win you or lose your ball games. We'll show you what we mean as we open up open up today's Ameritech playbook. Here's today's Ameritech playbook, and with a three and two count, Manny Alexander swings at a pitch up and out of the strike zone. Would have been ball four, tied the game. Instead, he had yet another pitch. And he wound up striking out with the bases loaded. And here is the good fastball that ends the inning. And that's your Ameritech playbook as Rodney Myers comes on to face the bottom part of the order. It's Polanco. And then a pinch hitter. And a first pitch ground ball off Grace. Myers flips to first. He did his job. How about that play? Any ball hit to the right side, you got to get over. And he did just that. Early in the game we saw Oliver not get over cost him a base hit this time taking nothing for granted Rodney Myers on seemingly an easy play to first base continued to head to first base and he was right there when Mark Grace booted it and Rodney picks it up and gets a critical out good effort by Rodney Myers heads up play. You don't see many 3 1 3. I was put just going to say that's <laughs> we've seen a lot of weird put outs. It's a good year. area code but not necessarily a put out. I like it for us. It's bad for the Cardinals though. And Luis Ordaz will come on to pinch it for Eversgird. Ordaz normally not a man who strikes fear in your heart as he comes to the bat. Hitting just 158 this year. 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter. A 3 2 Cardinal game and Myers misses with ball one. Well, in St. Louis, they've already put out the afternoon extra. One for history. It says on the front page of the Sports Extra with a big shot of Mark McGuire after he hit the baseball. Both hands extended, the crowd ecstatic as he tied Roger Maris's record with number 61 today in St. Louis. And they were kind enough to come right in our booth and give us a copy of this historic edi edition of the St. Louis Post Dispatch. And I know for you the big thing was you saved 50 cents. Of course. Now if just <laughs> now if I could just get somebody to read it to me I'd be okay. <laughs> and here is the extra edition as we get it straight down for you. There it is. One for history. And there's the great shot of Mark McGuire. Both hands extended toward the heavens as if he's trying to shake Roger Maris's right hand in congratulations. And do you think those folks behind him knew it was gone. They were all on their feet. Awesome. Just an awesome spine tingling moment. I'll never forget this one today. And we've got one more of the same tomorrow night on WGN with game time at seven o'clock. And it'll be Steve Traxel against Kent Merker. The two two pitch is low looking ahead to the ninth as you see our matchup tomorrow somebody will have to get aboard for Sammy Sosa to get another swing the top of the Cub order is due up in a one run game and I'm sure Cardinal fans wouldn't mind it a bit if the Cubs did score they want to see McGuire have another shot in this afternoon's ball game fly to left easy for Brown he's got it two away and you might remember the last time the Cubs were in town Sammy came to bat in the ninth inning of a game the Cubs were trailing five to three and hit a two run homer to send that game into extra innings then in extra innings Sammy came to bat single to right field and at the time it gave the Cubs the lead that was a game that they were destined to lose but not without the Sosa heroics and now Eli Marrero is the batter Marrero one for two with a home run he's walked and has slide out to center and he looks at a strike 0 and one. Three to two the Cardinals leading in the eighth inning. Cardinals have kind of a closer of the moment type situation here. It's been Brantley. It's been Kushier. It's been Acevedo. And that's who it's going to be this time. Well it's I think it's pretty obvious to everybody Brantley's not quite right yet. Right. But when he gets his arm strength back the Cardinals are banking on him being a dominating closer for them. There is Jeff Brantley who has been in and out this year by his own admission one day he's got the good fastball the next day he doesn't there's no rhyme nor reason to what he has on a given day and that's typical of a guy just coming back from arm surgery which he is. The one two 
is low two balls and two strikes. Let's pause for a quick station identification from St. Louis. This is America's number one sports station WGN Chicago. The pitch is high three and two in New York Mets for Atlanta two, bottom of the fifth inning at Shea Stadium and in Pittsburgh where we just left I'm sure that they're ecstatic about the fact that in the bottom of the ninth inning they're in a rain delay. Three two strike three call Myers works a nice one two three eight to the ninth we go the Cubs need one to tie they need somebody to give on get on to give Sammy Sosa a chance he's due up fourth after eight. We go to the ninth inning. Cubs have three outs with which to get at least one run. And Juan Acevedo standing between them. Acevedo at eight and three, a fine ERA of 2.93 on for the 30th time. He's got just five saves. It's a hard throwing right hander. He's been used as a starter nine times this year. Trying to help out that decimated starting rotation. Now he has moved into the bullpen. And he will have to face the top of the order with Lance Johnson leading it off. And if the Cubs can get one base runner Sammy Sosa will have an opportunity. But the Cubs have been their own worst enemies in today's ball game. already 10 men left on base seven of them left in scoring position today. Yesterday the Cubs left 10 men on six in scoring position against the Pittsburgh Pirates before losing in 10 innings four to three. If the Cubs do tie it up or go ahead and then we'll open the door for Mark McGuire to hit in the ninth inning for the Cardinals. And not many fans have left this ballpark. I don't think anybody's going to leave before <laughs> this thing is officially in the books, so to speak. Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa continue their duel today. The Cubs need a victory here. For the Mets are winning. Or Daz stays in the game for the Cardinals. He's going to play shortstop. He replaces Placido Polanco. But it would make bigger news if he replaced Placido Domingo or Domingo, whatever yes. it is, whatever it is. I'm not an opera fan, you know that. 61 to 58. Here's your home run <laughs> tally, but Sammy might have a crack here in the ninth. It's Placido Domingo, right? And that's who it is. Oh, he, he's, he's the nice. second of the tenors. You'd think they'd have ten of them. One ball, no <laughs> strikes. A leadoff walk would be nice for Lance. And for the Cubs as well. One ball one strike. The pitch swung lined over short toward the gap left center field. It's a lead off ninth inning single. Now how do you play it now. We'll watch it again as Lance Johnson leads it off with a base hit. And again this Cardinal team has blown more saves than any team in the National League. So the tying run aboard. Conventional wisdom says you play for the tie at home and the win on the road. But conventional wisdom wasn't designed for a team that's in the wild card race. So let's see what Jim Riggleman has in mind because he's paid to make very difficult decisions. And Tatis, for one, thinks that Jose's going to be bunting. Well, Jose's hit the ball hard three times today, has one single to show for it. Johnson measures the lead. Jose shows bunt, takes strike one. 